Welcome back to The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. Let's look at the second conversation and the issue of a thought for has resurfaced ahead of the 2023 elections. Now, in 2014, four opposition parties merged to challenge President Goodluck Jonathan uh, to winning the elections in 2015. The parties had formed all the All Progressive Congress and the, uh, because uh, for the need for radical change with the mantra change with the APC. The measure in 2014 includes the ACN, led by Nigeria's former anti-corruption chief, uh, Niu Robadu, and the Congress for Progressive Change, that's the CPC, headed by the former military ruler, Mohamed Abari, as well as the All Nigerian People's Party, that's the ANPP, and the All Progressive Grand Alliance. Now, ahead of the 2023 general elections, the former governor of Kanu State and Minister of Defense, uh, Rabi Kwankwaso, has joined forces with some of his associates to wrestle power from the ruling All Progressive Congress in 2023. While the proponents of the thought force say that the ruling party have failed Nigerians, will there be a repeat of 2015 in 2023? Now, joining us to make sense of all of this is Professor Kamilu Sani Fagi. He's a lecturer of political science in Bayaro University in Kanyo and a political analyst. It's good to have you join us, uh, Professor Sagi Fagi. So um, the, the, the big question here is, do you see a thought for us in 2023? Um, yeah. You see, depending on how the, the, the people who are uh, trying to mobilize and uh, form the organization, it depends on how capable they are and uh, how serious they are in trying to actually uh, from a third post, if we can call it. Yeah, because uh, from the look of things, um, but they, they haven't come out clearly to say that they want to form a party. But they say they, they are trying to have like a pressure group uh, composing of people from different parties so that they will come and make sure that credible people are elected in 2023. But, but we already understand how, you know, the system actually works. A lot of persons are saying that uh, the proponents of the thought force ideology are not serious because they don't have to wait up until the year of the elections before having, uh, you know, this force. Other persons have also queried those uh, behind the thought force. If you look at them, some of them are also part, they were part of the system, the PDP, the APC, and what have you. And so uh, Nigerians are politically aware and they're saying there's no way this is going to happen. Yeah, you see, the, the timing, the timing is rather a little bit uh, late. Uh, because if you look at the calendar of INEC, uh, they don't have sufficient time uh, to try to replicate what happened in 2015. Uh, meaning, uh, try to combat uh, support uh, to form a, a solid political party that to compete with uh, the two major ones that we have now, even though there are other parties. But I think, that to me, it is the time, or the time rather, that um, is a little bit late. Okay, whatever uh, the philosophy or the reasons behind their coming together, uh, I think they, they, they are doing it a little bit late. Uh, secondly, if we look at it, it is going to likely, it's likely going to be an old wine in new bottle. The same people who have been recycling, uh, you know, the, since uh, the inception of this uh, democratic dispensation, are likely going to be the same people who will now uh, 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 coalesce together and uh, try to form another party, uh, you know, coalescing from other different parties. Uh, in order to form the new one, if, they, if that is what they wanted to do. All right, Professor, um, um, we recall that it was uh, former President uh, Chief Olushego um, Obasanjo who popularized the, the term third force. Um, is this third force possible in Nigerian politics as it is today? Is it necessary? And if it's possible, what needs to be done 
to make it a reality if it's necessary as well uh, what needs to be done to make it a reality because um we remember the rescue and we can't forget in a hurry the rescue nigeria project that was um uh, summoned by the likes of uh, professor Patu tommy professor tahiru jaga um donald duke Abdul Fattah Ahmed, the former governor of Kwara State, who on that day um, was uh, told that the EFCC or one of the agencies had, had um, you know, taken over his building. Is this third force feasible? And if it's necessary, how can it be actualized? Well, the third force, uh, given the nature of our multi party democracy, I think it's necessary. Uh, we should have uh, major parties that can compete among themselves, that can give the electorate a viable option for them to, uh, to elect uh, people of their choice. Uh, but the way we have it now, there are two dominant parties, and the electorate have little choice as to what, uh, can, or who's can, uh, which candidate will they elect at national level. Of course, uh, smaller uh, parties could be uh, strong in local elections, like the way we see Abga in the southeast, and uh, maybe we could have other ones coming here. So as far as being necessary, I think that is uh, a right, that if it's necessary, we should have uh, major parties like that. But uh, whether it is feasible uh, at this moment, I think that is where the problem lies. Because uh, by our own calendar or by any calendar, uh, it, it, we have barely six months now when the electioneering campaign will be open. Uh, that is uh, in August. Now you see, given what it takes to form a party, to register it, and now to get um, the it uh, in at least 24 states, and then to mobilize electorate uh, in such a way that they will accept the, the candidates of the party or they will accept the party. I think that is uh, the problem. And the other thing is whether they have the resources uh, to actually compete with the uh, major parties. So uh, to me, I think that is their uh, actually here. That is their major problem that they will face at this time because of what I mentioned uh, in terms of timing, in terms of resources, and in terms of logistics, and so many things that they they have a very limited time to actually mobilize and uh, get themselves known, uh, so that they can compete favorably or equally with the major parties. Well, uh, Prof, just a quick follow-up to that: Does is this not therefore making the case for probably those who are proponents of a two-party state? just like we had um, in the SCP NRC era. You see, two parties, two parties said, even where we have them, they grow naturally. It is not that you impose the party and say people should join. You see, even in America, where you have two-party system, even in uh, Britain, there is not only two parties. There are smaller parties, only that the major ones are dominant, uh, to the extent that uh, you, you, hardly, you hardly hear about the local ones, I mean the smaller parties. So uh, to me, I think we should allow the process, the political process, to take care of itself. We could have so many parties, but those ones that could not uh, perform well, they could die a natural political death, and people will now finance into a, a major parties. But if you now want to make it like the way the military did it uh, when they, they imposed a uh, two-party system, uh, SDP and NRC, you, you are likely going to have a lot of uh, crisis within the parties because people of different opinions and ideology will be forced into a, a, a two parties and at the end of it, the differences will surface and uh, there will be crisis within the party. But if it is a natural growth, people of like mind, people of uh, the same ideology, beliefs, and so on, you see then they will come into the parties uh, of their choice, and, and they will own the party, and uh, that will take us, make uh, the system better for us. All right. 
Well, I think there's so much that we can take at this point in time. Thank you so much for being part of the conversation. Uh, even though we wish we had more time, uh, you know, to have, uh, you know, a lot of issues looking at some of the concerns that's been raised, especially the fact that you have the third party force coming up, usually, you know, just the year before the elections, and it fizzles out and come back and comes back again afterwards. But many thanks, Professor Fagi, for being part of the show this morning. We do appreciate your time. Thank you. And Kofi, that's it. Very interesting. Um, last uh, time I checked um, on INEX, you know, uh, portal, you have 18 political parties um, in Nigeria. Um, some of the political parties, I wonder if people will, um, will recognize. Know. Yeah, recognize, <laughs> you know. Um, but but INEC has even whittled down the number of political parties. They, they listed or they registered some parties. It used to be more than this. And so maybe it's even kudos to them that they, we have just 18 compared to the number, numbers we had. There are more than the pipeline, and there are more that are, are being worked upon. But it's interesting, the gentleman, the professor said it's, it's, it's late, you know, to come up with mm. any third force. And know. he also mentioned that it depends on the strategy that's been put out, because if you look at 2014, yeah. that led to 2015, mm -hmm. he started, I mean, that whole measure started in 2014, and it was just uh, ahead of 2015. Even though you also had at the time the People's Democratic Party, uh, you had a lot of persons doubting the capacity of uh, you know having this major taking over mm -hmm. the elections yes, but yes. some persons have also said it was about the personality okay the candidate okay. they were projecting and of course you have president muhammad abari and in this case some people are saying you have kwanko so you have the rest especially in the same region <laughs> coming together <laughs> but we don't know how that you know, pans you out know, for you know you know what 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 structure because the the guys who came you know and from the apc came with something to the table you had rochas who came with his own block of the apka he was governor of, of, of Imo State, and he had supporters. You had uh, uh, um, uh, President Buhari and his group who came from the Congress for Progressive Change. They, they, they had their structure in northern Nigeria. Then you had uh, Bola Betinbu and his group who came with the Action Congress. They had their structure in the southwest. You had Amechi, you had Saraki and co. who left the PDP from the NPDP and then moved into the All Progressives Congress. They had structures, they had supporters, they had base, they had money. Mm. They have they had money. But, but, but they you, came with money, which is very important. Mm. We, we need to move away immediately. So, but you also you know, have the you know Kwankaso with Kanu, and Kanu is a major. Is a major. Are they you know is a they, major. I'm not, I'm not trying to hold brief for them, but w a lot of people are thinking that you know Kwankaso might mm. just be thinking about Kanu, which is a very major one. We're looking at 44 local governments, uh, you know, and it feels mm. like if you can win Kanu. Then you can win the entire yes, yes. You know, I, I, I was responding to the, the whole time frame, you know, the comparison with the time it took, you know, the APC to... And the structures to make, they Yes, had. yes, yes. Because they, they, had, they didn't have too much time, but we should not look at the time they came together. We can also add to that the time that they spent building their individual structures and parties. The structures now, they already have. Yes. Now, these guys, Pastor Tommy, uh, Jega, um, uh, um, what do you call it again, um, Abdul Fattah Ahmed and co, Kwan Kwaso and co, um, um, what, what have they built apart from you know, the pockets they have in the state, what have they built? You know, in Kano State right now, it's between, of course, uh, Kwankoso has his Swankasia movement, okay, and they all wear the red caps and all that, um, but, but this is Nigeria we're talking about. That will be a conversation for another time. Thank you so much for being part of The Breakfast. It's been an amazing conversation, two hours up until now. And we will return with The Breakfast tomorrow. Trust me, it's going to be very explosive. And if you miss out on any part of the conversation, it's all right to follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram with Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. And do subscribe to a YouTube channel as well. I am Messi Boko. Have a fantastic Wednesday. And I'm Kofi Bartels. Enjoy your day. We'll return tomorrow.